Welcome to all you viewers of Longmont Public Media. My name is Rosana Longo, better, and today in the studios we have Boulder County Commissioner Marta Lochmin. Marta has been elected to the Board of County Commissioners in 2020 with a term continuing through January 2025. And Marta is a longtime Longmont resident who has been working for social, economic, housing, justice, and building opportunities for many families here in Boulder County. She's currently appointed as a representative to the Consortium of Cities, Mobility and Access for All, Metro Area County Commissioners, and Workforce Boulder County, among other things. And Governor Jared Polis appointed her to the Colorado Workforce Development Council. And we also have Tanya Jimenez. She's housing developer, Boulder County Housing Authority, who holds a master's degree in sustainability or sustainable real estate development for, from Tulane University. Mm -hmm. I love Tulane University. Mm -hmm. And also a bachelor's degree in environmental design from the University of Colorado. And uh, today we are here to talk about the ARPA funds. Why? Because the ARPA funds back in March 11, 2021, the American Rescue Plan Act called as, you know, known as ARPA was, this, uh, was signed into law. And as part of the ARPA, the Coronavirus State and Local Fiscal Recovery Fund was established to address specific impacts, impacts of the pandemic. Boulder County was allocated with $63 million a little more than $63 million. And today we are going to be discussing how are these funds going to be implemented. So I would like first to ask Commissioner Marta Lochman to give us a roundup of how these 63.3 yeah, million dollars are going to be allocated. Sure, thanks. First of all, thank you for the conversation and it's an honor to be here with you. All. I So yes, we received $63.3 million and I'll share as briefly as I can um, based on my previous experience and coming into this role as a county commissioner, working within community, understanding cultural brokering, understanding human-centered design, understanding that community voice typically has been, and specifically for communities of color, has been excluded intentionally from the way that funding opportunities, programs, processes. That's just my firm belief. And so when we heard about this opportunity, and not everybody in the country took the opportunity of accepting ARPA funds because there's so many federal guidelines. It is a very complicated process. We learned that after the flood of 2013. We've learned that with other federal funding, et cetera. And my ask to the board of directors and to the leadership team at Boulder County uh, in March of that year was, how might we do this different to really complete the goals, which was relief of COVID-19. Um, and for me was how do we get to equitable outcomes, which creates the question of how do we do the entire process differently. Um, and so it took a little while because systems are systems, especially when they're built in white supremacy. And to bring around a leadership team to be able to say, okay, we'll stop, we'll move back, we'll, we'll, we'll try and not do shovel ready, which is one of my favorite government terms, and we will use a community engagement process that, that I was able to lead for the county to ask community members, how do we locally in Boulder County need to use this funding? Have we been most affected? And, and so it was an extensive process, but the, the outcome was community members telling us we need to focus on economic challenges, we need to focus on affordable housing, and we need to focus on behavioral mental health after COVID-19 or in the midst of this time, in the midst of COVID-19. And that is precisely where, you know, these three areas are important, but the one that we're gonna be talking today is affordable housing. And why is it so urgent? I would like to ask you, Tanya, why is the topic of affordable housing so urgent for our communities? and how much money from these funds are going to be allocated to support affordable housing? Um, yeah, well, affordable housing is a big topic, um, especially in Boulder County. Um, we have a lot of families that um, are paying, you know, um, more than half their income for rent. 
um, and that shouldn't be the case. Um, people need to live um, and be able to not have all their money go um, towards rent. You know, they should be able to buy the things that are necessary, food, um, school supplies, um, and whatever it is that they need to just live a comfortable life. Um, so yeah, we are um, working on Willoughby Corner. It's our, um, you know, all affordable housing community in Lafayette. Um, and from yeah. what I can see, Tanya, the affordable housing called Wallaby Corner has been assigned almost $13 million yeah. to assist and to help communities of color and what you were saying, um, Commissioner Lachman, people that have not been able to acquire wealth. So it's really going to be, it's, it's, you're making a big effort of really trying to bring these communities to apply for these affordable housing. So if you can please explain to us, how is it that you are gonna be able to make sure that people can come in? Because as we know in our community in Boulder County, the majority of our residents of color and specifically Latinos are living in mobile homes. And the whole process of getting into affordable housing is so complicated and you need so many papers to show income and all that, that it becomes like Marta Lochmin was saying, Commissioner, that it is really prohibit. So what are you going to do in order to uh, bring our communities into this affordable housing? Yeah, um, so we've started having community um, meetings um, with the Lafayette community and the Boulder County community. Um, we really um, want Latinos to come and, you know, apply and even just get on our um, interest list and our waiting list for the for Willoughby housing. Um, you know, we the way we set up the project is um, it serves multiple types of families and people, individuals. Um, the first phase includes rental housing for 55 um, fam uh, families of 55 years and plus, um, as well as just rental housing for families. So units vary from one to three units. So larger families can also live at Willoughby Corner. Um, our last phase, our phase three, which is a few years away, will be all affordable um, for sale housing. So this is um, sort of that next step into getting into affordable housing, into um, housing that you know you can build equity and um, uh, general generational wealth and pass that on to your children. That's something that's so important for Americans and families, um, especially Latinos who tend to have lower rates of homeownership um, and who are severely impacted by you know the recession and. Um, all the um, um, terrible the loans, that, mm -hmm. yeah, that, predatory uh, loans. Predatory Tanya loans. Jimenez, Thank Tanya you, Tanya Jimenez, Housing Developer, Boulder County Housing Authority. Thank you so much for what you have said. I think that that is a perfect segue to ask Marta, um, Commissioner Marta Lochmin, exactly about why is it important, so crucial, to have affordable housing for economic growth. You that you have the knowledge. The, yeah, the, the background, I, I probably have the, the most of a background, uh, 24 years, in the housing industry um, in different ways, understanding the mortgage market, working with that. Um, and you're talking about the recession in 2006, those predatory loans that were happening. We did a study later um, for the state of Colorado um, here through the city of Longmont in our region about what predatory lending really did to our Spanish speaking families and also aging adults. Um, it, it, most of those loans were 12 to 24 months later is when we saw the adjustable rate mortgages, the arms truly decimate families and specifically Latino community in this entire country based on national work that I've been involved in with the National Association of Hispanic Real Estate Professionals. We have been talking about the, the racial financial gap um, around uh, families of color and communities of color in this country for, for 20 plus years through that organization. The other piece that's really important here is the pooling that we continue to do um, at the county. 
and residents who respond to these pol the polls continue to say that housing affordability is the number one concern. And so there's a couple of pieces of how do we respond to that. Willoughby Corner is one, one project. The other one that we've opened since I've been in office is Spoke on Kaufman here in Longmont um, as another transit-oriented development just, that just means it's a, a fantastic site that's near our resources as Boulder County, um, near the DMB, near Housing Human Services, near uh, all the different clinics, resources, et cetera, but also in walking distance um, and, and, and close distance to the bus station here on 8th and Kaufman. So those are pieces that we're looking at as well. But the opportunity to, in Willoughby Corner, look at how do we serve and respond to different family needs, like Tanya was describing the different phases and what that will open up for opportunities. I am a strong believer. I will always believe with my understanding of the way that this system in the United States works with finances and access to credit, access to capital um, that affects every other walk of life and every other bill that we pay as people, that if you don't own a home in this country, you do not have the same opportunity to move ahead, period. You just never will. And, and Tanya is exactly right. We talk about affordable housing. The definition is if I am paying more than 30% of my income in housing, it's no longer affordable. And she's exactly right. We have more than 60% of our folks in, in Boulder County paying more than 50% right now. And it's not just mobile homes where we as Latinos live. It's entry level homes that are also missing from inventory, condos, townhomes, um, smaller single family. We have a crisis and we have for quite a while. And so now in this role as, as county commissioner, working with our, the amazing staff in Housing Human Services, working with partners like you who are trying to bring the light of what is the need and how do we solve it. This is just one piece of it. And there's urgency. There's urgency. You can hear the urgency. I feel there's like this urgency. every day. And again, what's going to happen and what, you know, I heard from people always saying what happens is that when there are these opportunities for people to access affordable housing, they don't apply. And, uh, you know, people, the, the people that are working people, you know, the, the community, our Latino community has one, two, three, four jobs many times or jobs during the weekends in order to just afford housing. That is the most expensive thing. But they don't apply to these supports. You know, the third, almost, yeah, almost 13 million are going to go to support this initiative. So that means you apply and you get into the rental and you start forming a community because one of the things that I know as also as a reporter working here in, in Boulder County that people love living in mobile homes because their community is, an, is in a mobile home. But the mobile home is not going to allow them to grow economically. They are not going to be able to use that mobile home as a stepping stone like an affordable housing, like really owning the land where the house sits in. So that's the reason my question for you will be, how are you going to be doing this? Because from my experience, I remember that the Latino Chamber of Commerce, what they did when there were some funds precisely to support the small, uh, the small businesses that were dying during the pandemic was that they sat with the people and they helped them feel the paperwork. Mm -hmm. So is that something that the county is looking to do to support the people not only going online, but also, you know, going to the places where our community is in order to help them feel all that paperwork? Yeah, of course. Um, that's something that we, um, BCHA, want, uh, um, strives to do is to help our community. And that can be in um, as simple as just filling out, you know, um, getting on our interest list, on our waiting list, filling out applications, going through the entire process of applying for housing. Um, you know, we understand that like those um, applying that process in itself can be a barrier to housing yes. and we want to eliminate those barriers. We want to help as much as we can. We have a team um, on our uh, leasing side that um, works with our community. Um, you know, all it takes is just reaching out, um, you know, we will help. That's what we want. We want to get people into housing. Well, and I'll just add, so we have a town hall actually tonight, which I don't know when this will be on and when people will be listening to it, but, but one of the asks, we have a town hall just 
at our new Southeast Lafayette hub, which we were just about to open, uh, and we're going to be talking about Willoughby Corner. And so my call yesterday after talking with some housing and human services folks, like, are we going to have our home ownership team on site? Like, what's that opportunity and how do we continue as a county organizationally to think about what are the next resources that people will be asking about? If somebody's in the room uh, asking about Willoughby Corner, they're also going to be asking about what's my opportunity for to access resources, down payment assistance, home budget counseling, to get prepared because our phase, it's going to be a while for all these phases to open. And so we're continually having these conversations. And the staff, mm -hmm. um, I got the email late last night, and they said, yeah, we'll be and, there. But how do we continue to do that? And how do we address these barriers? At and it's happening about? super fast, Commissioner, because from what I see, this uh, Willoughby Corner is going to be up and going 2024. Uh, already so people need to get on it because it's a whole process what are the requirements for people to apply for this first phase besides being 55 and over do they need a social security number do they need to prove their income if you can just you know tell us so that people listening to us get a feeling and also where can they go to find out more um, yeah, so I think the first step would be to go to the Willoughby Corner website and sign up for the interest list and the waiting list. Um, this just gives um, folks that are interested in Willoughby Corner that opportunity to um, get information updates and when it times um, when the time comes to apply, they will get that notification to start applying. Um, the application. To, for applying, it's an application. They fill out the form. Um, and then when it comes time to actually, you know, um, submit documentation, income verification is required. Um, and um, I believe that's all. Yeah. There's a lot of requirements. There but are the key a lot of requirements. Here, and I want to, with this question, I want to finish up. The question is, why is it that affordable housing is also an environmental justice? Mm. Well, two pieces. I, I would be remiss if I didn't just let viewers know uh, that we have on the November 2023rd ballot a county ballot measure, which is a reallocation of a current tax as an extension to fund affordable and attainable housing. We have never had a sustainable funding source like this. So to move this needle by responding to folks who continue to ask about affordable housing in our county, to be able to support our municipalities, to be able to work with our housing authorities that are you know, around our region, to be able to even access Prop 123 funding and the state of Colorado and some of these other significant initiatives, that is a huge opportunity for people who are like, okay, I might not, delete, not need to live in Willoughby Corner, but I do believe this is an issue for my neighbors, for my friends, for the folks who give me health care, for the first responders, the teachers that support our youth and are building our future. This would be a way for people to, to respond to that. So I just want to want to add that in there. And I also, um, but I want to give Tanya an opportunity to, to jump into your yeah, well, I mean, we are facing um, climate change and, you know, we think it's important to build better, build more sustainable buildings. Um, our Willoughby Corner community, our buildings will be net zero ready. Um, we will have um, geothermal, uh, geothermal heating um, and, you know, just different sustainable features throughout the community. We'll use uh, native uh, flora around the the entire site, so less water use. Um, we're just trying to build a, comf a comfortable um, neighborhood for the people who live there, and um, something that um, makes a, less of an impact on our earth. And I'll just add into that, uh, Rosana, mm -hmm. so that you you know and the viewers understand that this will be the net zero 400 unit complex of Willoughby Corner when it's completed will be the first in the state of Colorado to hit that mark. So we're talking about breaking down a whole lot of barriers, opportunities in climate change and access to community members and building a community with Willoughby Corner. Something extremely important. Thank you so much, Commissioner Marta Lochmin, for coming today and talking to us about this crucial and important opportunity for our communities to step ahead, to really make a big change. And thank you so much to you also, Tanya Jimenez, a housing developer and Boulder County Housing Authority uh, for coming and talking about this because it's urgent and hopefully our communities that have been listening today 
um, and or that need housing or that will like others to access this important service, help them, you know, pass the, the baton, help them so that they can continue living in our in our communities and not be gentrified. I think that's an important issue. Thank you so much. Is there something else that you would like to add? Um, yeah, get on our waiting list, get on our um, interest list, it, you know, get our updates. And if anyone's interested, just sign up. Sign up so that yeah. way you can get in the list. Marta. Thank you. Thank you for bringing and bringing this topic to light and giving us an opportunity to share about this one project. And my, my hope is, my desire is that we're going to be able to continue creating these types of opportunities to respond to the need, respond to the crisis that we have right now here in Colorado and our area. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. My name is Rosanna Longobetter, and thank you all viewers of Longmont Public Media for listening to this short interview. We're trying to really promote what the ARPA fans are trying to do in order to support our communities in need. Thank you.